Major support for Do the Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company, with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Today we're at Gorman School, home of the Cougars, and we're here to Here we are at Gorman School. We've got some fifth and sixth grade students and we're going to do a little bit with area and perimeter today. You guys know about area and perimeter? Yes. Okay. okay. So I'm going to give you guys each a piece of paper and we're going to do the backside that is blank for right now. All right. And what I would like you to do is you can take a colored pencil, preferably a darker color one. So the yellow may not work as well. Okay, so that way we can just kind of see what you guys are writing as we keep going. All right, everybody ready? Mm -hmm. All right, so on the back, let's write down the word area. A-R-E-A, -E area. Have you ever heard of this term in mathematics before? Mm -hmm. You have? What do you know about area? What, what do you think you know about right now about it? Like, what is the area of something, right? Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. Have you heard of area and perimeter? Yeah. They go together? I don't know what it is. I don't remember. Okay. Isn't it like, say we had a circle, isn't it like the distance from one point of the circle to the next? Right, when well, you're talking about diameter, right? Okay. So we're going to talk about, uh, think about a rectangle or a square. Okay. If we wanted to know the distance around this table, that would be the perimeter of it. But if we wanted to know how much area was right here in the middle of it, that would be the area of the table. Do you guys remember hearing about this? Area and perimeter? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's go perimeter right underneath it. So, P-E-R-I-M-E-T-E-R. -E -E so, area and perimeter, that's what we're gonna be working with today. All right. If I draw a figure on here, I can have the length and the width. You guys have seen this before, right? Like X and Y? X and Y. You can label it whatever you want, right? So you have length and width, okay? If I say that this side is four feet long and this side is four feet long, can I figure out all the way around it? Yeah. How do I do that? You um, do four times four. Okay, I could do four times four because they're all the same. Yeah. Right? Is there another way I could do it? You can add them. I can add them, right? I can just go four plus four plus four plus four, right? Because if this side is four, what's this side gonna be? Four. 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 And this side is four, this side's going to be four. 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 Okay. So the perimeter is the distance around something, okay? The area is all of the shaded in part, okay? Now if I add all these up, what will I get? 16. 16 what? Feet. Feet, all right? So we get 16 feet. Do you all agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now if I want to do the area, I'm going to multiply the length and the width. If I multiply the length and the width, what do I get? 16. 16, right? But now it's 16 square feet, right? Because if this was one, right, if we filled them all with squares, it would, they would be square feet. You guys have worked with this before? Yeah. yeah. All right. 
So a little bit about area and perimeter on the first session with some students from Gorman School. All right, we're back. We've got some fifth and sixth grade students from Gorman School. We're going to work with a little bit about area and perimeter. You guys ready to start? Yes. Yeah. All right. So here's what I want you to do. One last rectangle we're going to put on our papers. All right. So we're going to draw a kind of long like that and narrow at the ends. So more of a rectangle instead of a square this time. And choose a number between 3 and 10. Nine? All right, so we're going to make this nine, and we'll make it nine feet. All right. And choose a number between two and five. Five. Five? All right, so we'll make this five feet. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to find first the perimeter. So we can just put a P equals. Now the perimeter is the distance all around it. Okay, we can use the formula, 2 times length plus width, or we can just add them all up. So go ahead, add them up, and let's find out what you get for the perimeter. So the distance all the way around that figure. So if you need to label the other sides, you can do that to make it easier for you. All right, so we have a 9, a 9, a 5, and a 5. And when we take 9, 9, 5, and 5, what do we end up with? 28. 28. 28 what? Uh, square feet. <laughs> Just feet on this one, right? Because we're going around it, so we have 28 feet. Now, if we want to do the area, we're going to go length times width. Now, what is the length? 9 feet. 9 feet. And the width is? 5 feet. 5 feet. So what's 9 times 5? Anybody know? 45. 45. So it's going to be 45, now what, feet? Square feet. Square feet. All right, so now we have 45 square feet. All right? So turn your papers over. Okay? And you're going to play in pairs. Okay? So one person is going to use their paper right now. Okay? So the person on the right, Okay, so you're my partner right now, okay? So the person on the right, they were going to use their paper. Okay? So the person on the left, you don't need your paper at all right now. Okay? What you're going to do is you're going to roll a pair of dice. Okay? I'm going to roll the dice, and you're going to multiply them. So I have 5 times 2 is 10. So what I can do is I can make a rectangle that covers 10 squares any way I want to do it. Now, how could I possibly cover 10 squares? Color them in. Cover but how do I know which 10 to color in? How do I measure it out? Up to them. X and Y. So how should I do it? Should I just go like this? No, because that's not going to be a rectangle. That's not going to be a rectangle? Well, yeah, I, I could be there. I could go to 5, right? Could I keep going to 10? No, you shouldn't. And you could be a very skinny rectangle. It would be a skinny rectangle, right? So I could do this, right? I could shade it in. Here's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? I could shade it in where I have 10 right there. Is there any other way I could have covered 10 that looks different than that? Yeah. How? So you, you could have put, like... Go ahead. Five, and, and, then, and then put the five on the other side, too. So I could go five like this and go five like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I could color these all in. And, then I've, and, then you and I've got it. ten. And then you can do a vertical, too. And I could have gone like this, ten? Yeah. So there's different ways to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is you're going to play with your partner, okay? So I rolled a ten. So let's say I did this one. Okay, and then Jacob will roll, and he'll, whatever he gets, 
And he can put his rectangle anywhere he wants, in any shape that he wants. Okay? You guys got the idea? Yep. All right, let the games begin. I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to go three. All right, so you guys have the idea of how you're going to do this? Okay, so what you do is you keep going. At the end of the game, the person with the most rectangles wins. Okay? Now, if somebody makes a really large one, is that going to be good or bad? It could be bad. Why? Because you won't have no more space. There won't be a lot of space left, right? Yeah. For you, if you're doing just large ones, you might have four very large ones, right? And the other person can make really small ones and they have more rectangles than the other person. So this, just another extension of area and perimeter with the fifth and sixth grade students at Gorman School. <laughs> well, I'm not there right now. <laughs> okay, we've got the fifth and sixth grade students from Gorman School. We've been working on perimeter and area, and now we're going to make it a little more difficult because you're going to have to fill in the shape that I put on your paper. So it's not going to be wide open anymore, okay? So you're going to do just as we did where you're going to roll the dice and you have to shade it in, but it has to be within this area that I block off for you. That's where it must go. And if you can't go when it's your turn, you lose your turn. All right, so you guys can get started. So you have to, so you have to put it like in there. It has to be inside this That's shape. That's really hard. Hopefully you get like five. <laughs> yeah. All right, so there's yours. So you two can go ahead and get started. I'll come around and make one for the two of you. All right, let's go like this. I'll come down. Over, up. There you go. Work on that one. Whoa. <laughs> All right, Jacob, here we go. You got three again. Are you ready for this one? All right. You want to go first or second? You'll go second? All right, so I'll go first. So I have a two and a five. Two times five is what? Ten. So I'm going to go like this. Uh, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and shade these in. So this will be my ten. All right, your turn. So four times four is 16. 16. So figure out where you want to put your 16. Because you can either go four times four or two times eight. But you can't get a 16 where you don't have anything long enough to go one times 16. So is there a way to do 16? There you go. So now you've got 16. Okay. How many are left? Six. There's only six left, right? 
Are there a lot of ways I can get six that you can think of? When I roll dice, not a lot, right? Okay, let's see how I do. Okay, one times two is two. I got lucky, so I'm going to go like this. One, two. So how many are left? Four. You've got few options now, right? A three and a five. You're not going to be able to get it, are you? All right. So let's see if I can. Now, what are the possibilities to get four? What do I have to roll to get a four? Two times two. Two times two. Or four times one. Right. So either one of those will work. So I'll go and see if I get one of those. Two times five. All right. You try. Well, you got a lot of fours, but those fours aren't going to work, are they? All right. So let's take a look. How did you guys do over here? You filled it in perfectly all the way. Oh, good. Okay. Now, you girls, can anybody fill in that last one? Is it possible? Yes. Ooh, all right. That's going to be a difficult one to get, though, isn't it? Yeah. And what about you guys down here? You have a couple left, right? No. With that odd shape, it's going to be hard, isn't it? Yes, yes it was hard. We had to pick up the whole space. So we'll see. All right, so here's what we're going to do. They're trying to get a one and a one. You're trying to get a one and a four or a two and a two. See if you can beat them. See if you can get it before they do. One and five. One and three. Three and three. Oh, close. A little bit with area and perimeter in the fifth and sixth grade students at Gorman School. Here we are once again with some fifth and sixth grade students at Gorman School. Famous Gorman School, I have heard. <laughs> So, here's what I'd like you to do. At the top of your paper, write 24 feet. Okay. Okay. 24. So, 24 feet. So, we have 24 feet of fencing. Okay? And the 24 feet of fencing, we want to make a large area to put, let's say, our dog in or something. Okay? Now, there are a lot of ways we could make 24. Okay, as far as covering like we've been doing with area and perimeter, right? So we want the largest area with 24 feet of fencing at the perimeter. So what are some ways I could use, I could make 24 feet going around something? Could I do a 1 times 24? I could, right? So I could go like this 1 and I could go all the way down 24, right? And it's only going to be this large, right? Do you think an animal would like to be in something that's only one foot wide, but 24 feet long? No, yeah, since my dog yelled. Probably not, right? Are there other ways that I could use that 24 feet of fencing yes. to make a better area and larger area? Yeah. Because this is just one times 24 equals 24 square feet, right? Mm -hmm. What's another way I can make 24? Um, you could do, um, you could divide it 24 by 4, which would be 6. Okay. And do like 6 here, 6 here, 6 here, and 6 here. Well, we're going to do like, we'll go like this. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And we'll go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I take this and shade it all in, right? This is a 6, and this is a 4. Now, add it up. Is that going to add up to 24 feet going around? No. Right. It makes 24 square feet, but it doesn't make 24 going around. Right. Could I have done this even? Because this makes 24 square feet, but is it using 24 feet of fencing? You see the difference? <laughs> if I go down 24 feet this way, and I go down 24 feet this way, how many feet have I used? 42. 40. 48, right? 40 something. 48. Yeah. Right? And then I have one at each end. That's two more, right? So 48 plus two is? 
What's 48 plus 2? 50. 50, right? So that would be 50 feet of fencing. Do I have 50 feet of fencing? No. How many do I have? 24. 24. 24. If I add this all up, what do I get? If I go all the way around it. 20. Right? 6 and 6 is 12. 4 and 4 is 8. So that makes 20 feet. How many feet do I have to use? I have to use 24. You can just... So what I want you to do is come up with a design on your paper that goes around 24 feet and then multiply it to see what the area is. All right, go. So, Jeremiah, you came up with something? I think. What did you do? <laughs> six, 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 six. Okay, so if you go six all the way around, that adds up to 24 feet, right? So label it 24 feet. That's the perimeter, right? So 24 feet. Now, the area is when you multiply the two numbers. So if you multiply those two numbers, the six and the six, what do you get? 30. 36, right? Six times six is 36, right? So put 36 square feet under it. There you got it, you got it. So 36 square feet underneath it. Did anybody else come up with it using 24 feet? Three. So you're going to go, how many squares across did you go? Three. You went three across. Okay, and how many are you going to go down? Eight? Okay. So if you go three by eight, right, if you add it all up, so right, label each side, eight, eight, three, and three, and then add them up and see if you get 24. That's all right. You know what we're going to do? We're going to keep on working on this. We're going to see what we can do to get the greatest area with 24 feet of fencing as the perimeter, working with the 5th and 6th grade students at Gorman School. That fits you beautifully. <laughs>